Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as Chris said, um, here somewhat under false pretenses uh, this morning, having handed the, uh, the, D, uh, the DX CEO reins over to uh, Peter Chavekovic, someone whom I'm sure many of you, many of you know, and return to my NED role, as, as Chris said, following uh, a long but thankfully successful refinancing that we completed just a week or so ago. Uh, however, the good news is that Peter and I are very similar in all our views, particularly on what is important for DX, which I'm going to talk a bit about today. Uh, in my short talk today, I am going to talk principally about the impacts of the recession on our business at DX, trying to draw parallels to some extent to things that are relevant to all operators, how we react to it, and indeed how we prepared to exit from it, which I think is a relevant theme for us all. I'm also going to make some brief comments reinforcing the continuing and indeed increasing importance of the operation of the regulatory regime in the new world in which we find ourselves, hopefully, post-recession. Um, I'm not going to use many slides today, just a, a couple of tables, but uh, the team have put together uh, a set of slides which will be handed out afterwards, which will summarize the main points about what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, to kick off, then, the, the, the UK and global economies have been through the, the most dramatic recession in living memory. And, and frankly, uh, many of us are still not sure that we're really, really out of the woods. We all have huge hopes that the signs that we're seeing, uh, encouraging signs we're seeing will sustain, but it's, 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 not really, it's not really clear until you get there. That the impact on the main industry has been severe, in my view, is twofold. Firstly, there's been an unprecedented fall in mail volumes at every level across Europe and, and the world. And the first table I have, if I can make this work, actually shows that, that you know, in most countries where there was a noticeable but relatively modest decline in volumes in the years 04 to 07, kind of exacerbated into huge declines over the last kind of 18 months to two years, right across the piece, uh, you know, Norway there, the Nordics very high, USA, and indeed the UK, is, was no exception to this, where we, we have had, and I'll come back to this, some, uh, a, a growing long-term trend, but exacerbating into 5.5%, they say, for last year, and the best guess of about 8% for 2010. Now, this, of course, has had a, a huge impact on revenues and on cash, <coughs> uh, impacting businesses financing capability, forcing cutbacks in investment rates, and necessitating cost-cutting across the board. The question now is how we build back from here, which in my view will critically depend on the nature of the actions taken by uh, individual businesses and us collectively in the recession, and I shall come back to that. The second overall point is that, as I've said earlier and seen by some of these tables here, the mail volumes have been showing an emerging trend of being in, in long-term decline, an average of 2 to 3% over the last four to five years. Now, within that total, there have been more pronounced reductions in, in certain uh, classes of mail, for example, parcel mail and certain classes of business mail, driven by the relentless progress of the digital media, internet, mobile technology, etc., etc., and only partly offset by initiatives in areas such as direct mail and, and in the packet sector. The biggest worry, or at least a very big worry in my mind, about the impact of the recession is whether the dramatic fall in volumes through that have accelerated what was beginning to become a long-term trend anyway, such that as the economy does emerge, and when it emerges from recession, the question will be, have we lost some of this volume forever, or, or will it come back, and, or, or has customer behavior changed through the course of the recession such that we won't see it again. So in summary, our industry has had two issues to deal with here. One, the more short-term issue in terms of lost volumes, revenues, and cash for a significant but nonetheless limited period, which have led to short-term actions on all our behalf, which will have long-term consequences. So that's on the one hand. But on the other hand, the longer-term strategic issue of substitution and switching from mail to other media. Now, my plan this morning is to address both of those issues in the context of our actions, because I think that should reflect what many of us have been, have been thinking and having and, and to do, and, and, and its impact on our, our planning for the future. So on the relatively shorter term issue, on the first point, I'd start by saying with DX Group 
has a very attractive operating and economic model. At its core is the document exchange, but around that is built a variety of other mail and courier services that leverage off the document exchange's national network and, and, and other common services. We use subcontractors extensively for our deliveries, meaning that a large proportion of our operating costs is variable, or at least semi-variable, and putting the conjunction of the network leverage and the subcontract model together creates a very profitable and cash-generative business that has a lot of resilience to economic down downturn. Nonetheless, the severity of this recession has been such that we were far from immune at, at, at DX, and so we had to take strong and in some cases very unpalatable cost action like, like most of our competitors. Our philosophy, as far as we could achieve it, was to find cost savings wherever we could, but without as far as possible cutting into the quality of our services and indeed investing in technology where possible to enhance those savings and enhance our ability to, to, to capture them, but also to an extent to retain our investment in resources in, in product development and in innovation, particularly around our existing products. So whilst we did successfully achieve significant cost savings, we didn't kind of slash and burn, as it were, so as to make every conceivable saving. And believe me, there was a lot of pressure on us to do exactly that. And by and large, we felt that across the piece, notwithstanding the savings, we were able to keep most, if not all, of our operating capacity in place. Now, achieving this balance is far more of an art than a science, as I'm sure you all know. And whilst I'm sure there are things we got wrong, things we should have done which we didn't, and things which we did do which we partially regret afterwards, by and large, in the wrong, we felt we got it about right. And what do I mean by that? We made substantial savings in our subcontract network, taking some 10% out of that cost category overall, which is a very, very material uh, cost category for us. And this was significantly helped by continuing and completing a previously initiated investment program in handheld devices and route optimization capability. These are programs we could very easily have pulled out of, and in some cases, actually were under some pressure to do so to save cash and capex, as it were. But we stuck with them, and this has definitely left the business much stronger and better prepared to face the post-recessionary world when and if that comes. We also continue to invest time and resources in, on the customer side, improving across the board the way in which we touch customers and our customer contact, reorganizing and strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of our telesales team. We put a lot of time and effort into that. Strengthening our field sales team and processes. Improving our post-sales customer service teams through, for example, enhanced telephony and the processes around that and continuing to invest in online order processing systems, which we are currently rolling out. We also continued and completed our investment in our key addressing tools, improving those. They are central to the optimal use of our core document exchange product, and, and, and that is actually, whilst it's been more difficult than we expected, has actually begun to show dividends for us. We've continued to invest in the quality and content of management information, both for ourselves and for our customers. In parallel, as a niche player, we believe there are opportunities to capture mail that we don't deal with today. And we've invested a lot of management resource and energy in this area, which again, we hope will yield very positive results as and when we emerge from the recession. On our B2C delivery product, we enhance that through investing in developing time time-defined uh, time capability and in exploring areas in which to create a, a network of collection points. And, and that's all been helped as well by the rollout of the handheld uh, program that I mentioned earlier. And last but not least, whilst we always ran a fairly tight ship on overheads anyway, like nearly every operator, we've made some economies there. So in essence, my, in essence, my message from the above is, is, is as follows. The last 12 to 24 months have been extremely tough for all of us in the industry, with volumes dropping and cash getting scarcer. Many hard decisions and compromises had to be made. However, whilst it's far from easy going through it, as we'll all testify, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll also, also admit that for those of us that have been sensible about how these economies have been made, We've been strengthened by it and provided, provided the economy now does flatten out and sustain, I, I think we will all benefit from that. 
My second overall point was to do with the longer term volume picture. It's very difficult to estimate or predict just how much volume the recession has eliminated permanently from the industry. I guess we'll only know when we eventually get there, when the economy comes back, will the relationship between certain classes of male volume and the economy will re-emerge in, in, in any fashion. At DX, we carried out some research in this area over the course of the last year, and, and possibly unsurprisingly, we, we found that some areas lend themselves to faster male substitution than others. And these are accentuated by various factors, not least generational effects. You only have to look out how young people communicate today to see this. The, their preferred means of communication is via phones and using social networking even rather than email. So, so life has definitely changed. On the other hand, we also found, again possibly unsurprising, that some of the more traditional areas like property and legal, very strong areas for DX, demonstrate greater inertia towards that kind of change. The reasons for this are not always straightforward, but they include factors such as uh, natural conservatism in some of those spaces, but also some complexity and difficulty of exchanging information between different institutions who have very variegated systems. Now, whilst that may represent some respite for, for DX and indeed some other companies around this room, the, I think the longer term message is still clear. It has bought us some time, but nonetheless, the message to my mind is we must all embrace the impact of the digital agenda because sooner rather than later it will, it will catch up with us. And, and this is quite a, a tricky area to deal with. Uh, at DX, we've done some exploratory work and indeed we are developing our thoughts in that space, but I have to say much still remains to be done by, by us. What we've sought to do in this, to address this challenge is, is in two ways. Firstly, and some of these are kind of fairly straightforward and un, 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 unexpected, I'm sure. The first is to, to look at areas where physical delivery will continue to be relevant and, and to grow. And the other is to explore ideas and models in the, in the digital mail or handling space, which had the attributes of both being relevant to our existing customer base and frankly, where we would have credibility, and I think that's a very important point. Of the first of these two points, in terms of the physical delivery piece, our, our principal actions have been in two areas. One is to innovate around our existing operating capabilities to capture more and more volume and to develop the products in, in that direction, and I've touched a little bit on that earlier. The second principal one was the acquisition of the Business Direct in Night business, which we made at the outset of the recession probably some 18 months uh, or so ago, which we were fortunate to be able to acquire at a relatively, uh, relatively modest cost. I'm just going to say a little bit about, about Business Direct. Uh, this is currently a B2B business that principally supports service engineering uh, network businesses across the UK, utilities, service engineers and photocopiers, that kind of thing which we believe is, is, is a growing niche in, in the delivery stroke logistics space and one I certainly recall from my days at Excel, and I think its day has come. And I think it therefore represents very attractive development opportunities just in the B2B space alone. We also believe that there are potentially even bigger B2C opportunities for, for BD in the, in the broader retail consumer space, but that segment, frankly, when you're dealing with consumers and, and retail philosophy and so on, is, is more complex. And, and frankly, we've therefore somewhat parked that for the time being while we focused on developing the B2B business space. But, but that is definitely an emerging trend and, and something that I see more and more happening as, as, as we go forward. The, the, the second category by which I mean the entry into the digital space itself is, is by far and away much trickier. There's a growing multiplicity of emerging digital ideas in the mail sector, and frankly, a growing number of parties who would like to work with businesses like DX and its customer base to develop these ideas into growing sustainable products and applications. And I have recollect very direct experience of this in the 1990s myself in the logistics space where the dot-com boom came and we had exactly the same kind of syndrome, very bright people bringing ideas, but the, but the challenge then for us, and then the challenge for us today is, is, is threefold. <coughs> threefold excuse me. Firstly is, which of all these applications are the ones to support? And that's got to be driven by relevance to and credibility with our own customer base. So that's firstly. Secondly, who amongst all these folks are the best to partner with, i.e., what skills and capability are truly required 
to deliver that overall proposition and solution and who has them and in particular who really has them as opposed to who says they have them and that's that's tricky for lay non-technical people I believe and last but not least there's the overall financial consequences and the resources and investment required and how best to structure that both in terms of overall shape of it but also how you share the risks and rewards. So I think that in itself is, 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 is a very challenging agenda. And thus far, DX has devoted some time, but a lot less time and resources than we would have liked. And we perhaps we focused on the more immediate impacts of the recession on our business. But it's clearly an emerging theme with customers being given and indeed expecting more and more choice as we go forward. And hence, it's an area that we all need to embrace if only to understand the implications on our business, if not more importantly in my mind indeed to develop our own agendas in that space. So I think we can all look forward to some very interesting initiatives emerging in this area, hopefully some of them from, from DX, but I'm sure from a number of the other more traditional players around, uh, around this room and indeed around the industry. So, so, so if I draw a line on that there, I'd like to take this opportunity to make some brief remarks as well about the evolving regulatory environment as we face into the post-recession and indeed the post-election future. Whichever government we are blessed to have after the elections in only a few weeks' time, there will be a very important regulatory agenda to pick up on following the effective suspension of the Hooper recommendations and postal bill last year for a whole host of reasons, but without doubt some of them election preparation considerations. I need, think we need to continue to remind ourselves and indeed the powers that be that the key imperatives identified by Hooper and I think largely accepted by, by, by most of us in 2008-9, they, they have not gone away and it's important for the health of the industry that we ensure the baton is picked up again post-election and not be distracted by, by, by other political considerations. Royal Mail's transformation plan, necessary even at the, before the onset of the recession, has become even more urgent now in my view, and the long-term health of the market depends on key decisions being made at and about Royal Mail, which clearly is still the, the dominant player in our market. Its financial stability and sustainability is important to us all, and that still needs to be properly dealt with. The other key point on regulation that I think needs to be made is about the encouragement of competition, about which a lot of certainly words are used and rhetoric, whether actions are matching that, is, is, is often less clear. But the, clarity, the, the criticality is that, and the fact is that to succeed in encouraging competition, if that is the goal, there must be appropriate and robust regulation. I mean, Postcom, who have just announced a, a very ambitious plan recently to take them through to the 2012 price control and beyond. However, that, you know, there is undoubtedly some latitude here to change the way in which Royal Mail is regulated, giving it perhaps a bit more flexibility to respond to changing circumstances and conditions in the market. But this must not come at the cost of competition, which is what provides choice and benefits to the market and to customers, and indeed is the one great spark to keep, to keep Royal Mail sharp. Last but not least, I, I couldn't finish today without saying something very briefly about the successful completion of the refinancing we announced last week. Uh, whilst DX is a strong and resilient business, and has been for a long time, uh, I think enviably strong, frankly, uh, I think this refinancing has substantially strengthened DX's balance sheet, and frankly has put us in a, a powerful position to emerge from the recession, underpinning and reinforcing all the very positive business and investment decisions we were able to, are allowed to make, uh, and the actions that we've taken over the last 18 months to two years. So in conclusion, I would say the following. The recession clearly has had a dramatic impact on mail volumes, and, and beyond the financial impact we have all already suffered, the key now is how much of that lost volume can and will return, provided we do the right things as we emerge from the recession. Secondly, th those who have cut costs wisely and invested judiciously during the recession will definitely emerge from it much stronger and more co capable to compete in their core products. Thirdly, the, the long-term prognosis for mail is for continuing overall declines, but in my view there do remain opportunities, particularly for smaller niche players, to grow volumes in what is clearly a declining but yet 
very, very substantial male market, and you can do that by being innovative and, and a fleet of foot. Fourthly, there, there is an imperative to understand and embrace the digital agenda for the more traditional businesses, so that lunch is eaten on them, and it, because it's clearly going to have an impact in the longer term. And, and finally, on, on a broader note, as we emerge from the recession, we do need to remember the messages from the Hooper Review a year or so ago. Royal Mail needs strength and financial stability for the good of the industry overall. And competition is important to the industry, and therefore strong, sensible, and consistent regulation is key to this if the smaller players are to survive and develop and prosper. Thank you very much.